benvenuti anche per i nostri ospiti adesso lascio la parola al direttore e per chi invece per i nostri amici colleghi italiani insomma, che partecipano siamo in una modalità mista quindi abbiamo anche i nostri partner del progetto europeo Adrisismic in presenza che ovviamente avranno la traduzione in inglese quindi ascolteranno in cuffia i nostri interventi e ovviamente tutti gli altri nostri interventi saranno tutti in italiano. Adesso lascio la parola al direttore dell'istituto, dottor Luca Loversi, per un breve iniziale saluto e poi inizieremo con i nostri lavori. Buon pomeriggio. Good afternoon, everyone. I just wanted to say a couple of words. Of course, speaking to you as attendees here and the ones on Zoom, can you hear me? Can you? It is not loud enough. Is it better now? Is it better now? You have to turn on the volume. Can you hear me? Eh, okay. mio era un Thank you. So I will say just a few quick words to open our meeting. Just a couple of things to say that it is a good thing to organize this meeting in Bologna because uh, uh, at the end of the 19th century all the city walls were torn down. So it is up to us to protect the city center, the historic city center. And I think that this is an important milestone. Um, I would like to thank our partners. One, two, three, can you hear me? Volume. We just needed to adjust the volume. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, I would like to thank the University of Bologna for cooperating with us on this project as well. Good evening, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, the mic is. I'm not Simona Tondelli. I replace her because Professor Tondelli will arrive at the end for conclusions. My name is Angela Sant'Angelo, researcher for the University of Bologna, together with Giorgia Predai and other colleagues here in the room. We coordinate uh, the project and uh, no, this uh, project was uh, funded in the framework of Adrian program, Interreg Adrian program. Non si sente. So, this is the final project of Bologna e ha visto una serie di partner provenienti dall'area del sud Eh sì, ho capito, non posso fare due robe. Uh, Predai is a, a social professor and uh, specializing in technical architecture, so the idea was to start from uh, putting together research uh, uh, purposes and uh, uh, the various uh, topics to be covered in town planning. So all in all, we started from our willingness to reconcile research uh, related to town planning together with the other types of uh, uh, interest related to building uh, conservation purposes and uh, issues. And therefore, we started to cooperate on this joint project uh, within this program. The project is about to end 
and it will end in February, in February 2023. And see, so this is uh, the final conference, and this is uh, the final conference of the project. And in addition to talking about the main results of our project, we decided to organize this event and to open up to technicians to give you an idea of uh, the final results. So we will uh, start with the two uh, contributions. Non si sente? Io so cambio canale. È, è vicinissimo. And then we will and the um, University of Creta uh, and our colleagues will uh, cover the main issues. And so we will uh, start now and uh, we will uh, then draw conclusions. One, two, three? No? Is it working? One, two, three? Forse perché Sorry. And so we will uh, therefore deal with the uh, weaknesses at the community level, at uh, the spatial level, especially in uh, central Italy. Luca Domenella is here with us as well. Luca, come forward. And they will uh, speak, uh, make their speech together. So they will uh, cover two sections of the same presentation. And the title is uh, Preventing Seismic Risk Through Town Planning, a Possible Integration. Luca is a researcher at the University of uh, Marche region, Polytechnic University of Marche, and she, uh, he deals with resilience and urban regeneration, regeneration of weak uh, territories with reference to seismic risk. As for the time allotted to them, we are flexible. So, <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, I have the task of uh, opening this afternoon concerning the issues that we are passionate about. A presentation has already been made. So, uh, thanks for the nice and kind introduction. I think that the invitation we received is linked to the fact that over the past few years we were engaged in rebuilding central Italy because an earthquake concerned uh, four regions, as you can uh, see on this map in central Italy, including Marche, Umbria, Abruzzo, and Molise and Lazio. I think that building yards are um, uh, open where you are involved in. According to facts and figures, this is apparently the most, uh, the biggest uh, building yard throughout Europe, but with a few critical uh, and weak spots. Since we are researchers for the university, we deal with town planning and engineering. We supported municipalities over the past few years. So uh, five years have now gone by uh, from the earthquake and uh, the 2016 earthquake follow-up is still there to be seen. And uh, the um, aftermath is not yet over. In the afternoon, we would like to cover two main issues concerning 
the activities that have been carried out. So we would like to uh, focus uh, our contribution concerning reconstruction. And so a few special decrees were uh, so far issued. The um, Adri Seismic Project is intended to understand how the urban setting can serve as the basis uh, to uh, do prevention and implement safety measures so that uh, uh, the urban uh, area can be designed during its building or rebuilding in order to reduce costs so that uh, there is a preparedness just in the event of a, a further future earthquake. Starting from 2016 to today, a few critical issues are still pending. And that is why this project is important because it allows us to go on and talk about these issues. Let's start from a few issues. Uh, the so-called special orders, which is the framework underlying the reconstruction efforts made by highly damaged little towns in central Italy. As for the Marche region, this is uh, the third of the whole region, and these special decrees are a part of a set of rules that uh, provide guidelines for private regeneration. Decree number 19, 2017, and this is the table that has been updated and also taken into account price increases that have occurred, as you know very well. And this uh, analyzes uh, uh, the public cost ratio and level of damage. So that's uh, it's a cost effectiveness analysis. Of course, looking at these uh, numbers, it is uh, clear uh, what the logical uh, topic and the solution would be, but it is not as easy as that, because our territory uh, is quite differentiated when it comes to the various regions and the regional borders themselves. And we also need to put in place the prevention measures that are suitable. Thirdly, we need to interpret the reconstruction phase after the crisis as an opportunity uh, to do prevention at the same time. So these are the main issues, the differences characterizing uh, this uh, earthquake event. And so uh, decrease concerning town planning, you see that the numbers uh, um, grow, so a focus on buildings, then number 39, namely programming of reconstruction through town planning measures. We as town planners, we uh, attach importance to that, but it is not always the case. So, uh, order number 39, this is uh, functional to actions to be undertaken on buildings. So, actions can be taken only if a holistic approach is undertaken. So, vulnerability at the urban level should be at the center of this approach. 
then uh, order number 107, Commissioner's Order 107, related to 2020, with reference to earthquake uh, that occurred in 2016. So it took four years to set up a legal framework to plan reconstruction. So this Commissioner's Order includes extraordinary guidelines underline reconstruction. And of course, this has priority as against town planning and uh, reconstruction at the individual level so that uh, a coordination of planning should be carried out. So the mechanism is quite different. It is as though we are faced uh, for the first time with a seismic crisis. If we go back to uh, the 2016 uh, earthquake, well, these are the areas, the topics that require analysis. Let's start from the extraordinary reconstruction program. And now I'll give the floor to my colleague who will enter into the details when it comes to reconstruction, talking about urban vulnerability. So guidelines are set. Then I will go back and tell you about a town planning examples. The Extraordinary Reconstruction Program is an instrument introduced back in 2020. It is a, a legal tool uh, aimed at coordinating reconstruction process, namely finding a roadmap to plan individual uh, reconstruction actions and public reconstruction projects. Uh, this uh, plan tries uh, to streamline uh, the process to speed up the whole reconstruction process. And so this is an example of one of the municipalities with which we have worked and where we have tried out and tested this working method to identify a design, a working program that is fit for reconstruction at individual uh, level. And at the public level. First of all, article number two uh, underlying the uh, tenets, the principles that are compulsory and that uh, set up the extraordinary program. And so, and three parameters are taken into account. So, we uh, can uh, therefore partially change the size, the volumetric sizes, and in coordination with uh, the Commissioner's orders and uh, in accordance to the simplification. Uh, decree. A whole set of analyses were carried out at a morphological level to uh, design a layout at the urban scale. And as you know, we have eight historic city centers to be taken into account. Planning a single action within a, a historic city center, forgetting about what happens in the surroundings, that wouldn't be the right process. And therefore, we wanted to break down various phases and sequential actions within the various municipalities when it comes to the city centers. Rules were set 
for how to proceed with each individual action and the operational and methodological processes to take action within the city centers. Hence, we <coughs> have uh, uh, drafted a general coordination plan and compliance rules. And therefore, we have tried to reduce urban vulnerability and increase so this is uh, the whole uh, structure so the, uh, this is uh, the uh, extraordinary reconstruction plan PSR can just provide guidelines and the need for an urban change in compliance with the law and uh, we go back to 1972 plan, take, which didn't take into account the landscape requirements, but in the Apennines, uh, protection measures have to be therefore set up. That is why we had to, to do a planning, uh, breaking down the territory according to landscape vulnerability uh, principles, criteria. And that was a first uh, anomaly, whereas in a plan, generally speaking, we would have uh, uh, been allowed to speed up, but the municipality decided not to implement another plan because it is regarded as slower. But reconstruction uh, extraordinary reconstruction plan and the municipal plans are uh, matched together. Based on the level of the landscape vulnerability, we could therefore introduce changes to pre-existing buildings through the reconstruction process. The extraordinary reconstruction plan cannot impose any, uh, in any decision on the individual. Uh, so a loyal reconstruction has to be put in place, taking into account the various critical issues. So there was a, a building, for example, that had collapsed and that blocked uh, the main street, but the private owner had to authorize uh, to uh, take action. And so the old, uh, and so th this is the first in hindrance of this first of this law. So loyal reconstruction is to be guaranteed. So reconstruct as it was. Then you should, therefore, take into account a few components of the volume of the new size to be uh, carried out in a different position if possible because of safety reasons the size can be increased always with uh, an agreement between the public and private uh, stakeholders to provide um, safety and finally uh, private owners individual owners can ask for uh, an enhancement and increase of the size. The uh, rule, the law, allows to be compliant with the uh, PSR without the landscape assessment, with a streamlining. Uh, there's a difficulty in the proceeding and implementing such a tool because uh, various stakeholders are to be involved to reduce the vulnerability 
of the urban fabric and on the other hand trying and meeting private owner uh, requirements to come up with buildings that are well integrated within the urban system. This is Borgo San Giovanni, the district. A, cu a couple of uh, slides are going to be shown to you. And there you can see the uh, new positions as against the previous buildings. <coughs> On the one hand, you had uh, a small distance between the two buildings. We suggested the private owner to move it back to increase the cross-section along the road and to facilitate access to emergency vehicles to improve urban access. Unfortunately, as we already said, as uh, Giovanni said, So, reconstruction is a collective action without uh, the convergence of timing. We can therefore mitigate the urban scale. So, I have to uh, go back to what I had, but talking with the various people over time, we mitigate this problem, but to take this um, overlapping uh, between the public and private sector over time, there is a lack of confidence, trust towards the public authorities, and there is a thrust towards innovation. Same volume, same surface. But for many people, that might be a problem. That was a change that was not acceptable. This is another aspect uh, where we, therefore, find the uh, various characteristics uh, to do the best again with the agreement between public and private sector. So we need to reconstruct exactly the urban context, maintaining the same characteristics and weaknesses. It is as though wasting the money. Uh, I mean, if there was a problem, we repeat the same problem because we know that in the event of a next earthquake, which, like it or not, might happen, we will be faced with the same critical issues. So we will go on spending money and wasting money. Hopefully, it doesn't happen. And I hope that things might change in the future. <coughs> so that was. Uh, the historic center uh, with uh, um, five streams and rivers. So it is a historic center with uh, uh, city walls. So taking action uh, to build the necessary equipment to reconstruct within the city center is quite complicated. So the uh, PSR, namely the Re Extraordinary Reconstruction Plan, uh, carried out a layout of uh, the urban building yards in a parallel independent way using common areas for the building yard where materials can be stocked in order to manage each sec section. And then there is the implementation phase where in a sequential way reconstruction will take place. If the uh, private owner slows down the reconstruction process of uh, uh, the building, uh, goes at the end of this uh, order. It is a small uh, coercion on the private owners, but we need to speed things up because uh, the earthquake 
took place in 2016 and it means that there is not an interest in reconstructing, in rebuilding, or there is a problem in the process if four years have gone by, or maybe seven years. So, individual technicians asked to adopt the this kind of approach because each technician has a, a 30, 40 projects to be implemented and so each uh, individual owner would like to go on with one's project and so the technician might explain why a priority is given. I would like to give back the floor to my colleague now. As for uh, the uh, PSR, uh, as far as this case study is concerned, of course, we are referring to the issues we are working on now, and that is part of the uh, common of the joint project, and we had to work in quite different contexts. And everything was uh, quite complex because of uh, the conditions within the historic centers, because we have to work within internal areas, inner areas, and I will go back to that. This picture here on the slide, to let you understand what it means to implement prevention, and to use the tools to improve the resilience of our city centers. Well, in this slide, you can see the various temporary emergency uh, projects that were built to uh, accommodate uh, displaced people, namely temporary wooden homes that were built up. And uh, that was uh, replicated from the Emilia Romagna earthquake um, solution, but this solution doesn't work in uh, central Italy because uh, you first need to implement safety measures, and uh, it took three years and a half uh, to uh, overcome the emergency situation to put everything in a safe condition so that people could go on and live there and uh, in many temporary settlements, you just find the tip of the iceberg. Uh, because, of course, you need to understand that uh, uh, traditional building methods are used, and this is something that concerned many areas uh, with uh, the doubling of the urban size in central Italy there was a, a destroyed city that was coupled with a new city and uh, these urban centers entered into competition not just in terms of uh, quality I mean historic center and outskirts Historic centers are still to be rebuilt. That is a solution where few elderly people are living and who will end their lives there. Some of uh, the people who live in uh, the temporary uh, houses won't go back to their previous original homes because many people are uh, older than 70 or 75. So the point is, it is no longer uh, a temporary settlement as it was devised. So, these, uh, this should be food for thought also during the reconstruction phase. 
because the reconstruction is an ex existential issue. Everyone, uh, well, we want to be to do it uh, right away or better. That is a right or to receive the contribution to do it. But in the case of Visso, uh, this is a, a hindrance. It requires a collective action and reconstruction can just be a collective action. The red curve is the response to emergency situation, the settlement. You see how these spaces doubled and you can see how morphology uh, influences reconstruction. Therefore, we have to cope up, cope up with these uh, new places after we have uh, done rebuilding. Figures are important. One diagram only. We are faced with uh, uh, an aging population. And uh, there is uh, a low birth rate and the uh, urban size has been enlarged even though the population is decreasing. So what to do with these city, cities? We would have never imagined to have so many public areas available and so we don't know what to do now. So these areas had to use new soil places where no uh, authorization would have been given to build, no building permit would have given, and significant numbers are there. And now let's talk about uh, the reconstruction plans to reduce urban vulnerability. You see, in addition to rebuilding uh, buildings, we have to deal with public space, the public spaces. And so we uh, need to take uh, the public spaces into account. They can be uh, regenerated. because of course you have to make access possible so there might be a problem in uh, uh, in terms of access for example so Many municipalities have been involved. And these municipalities are spread out, which means that uh, settlement model is highly distributed. And so uh, bringing the historic center under safe conditions is not to be taken for granted. Let me see a few. Let me show you a few maps. The implementation plans are now being performed, carried out. These plans had already been approved, and these are the uh, plans in force. First of all, you have to define uh, the uh, area to be rebuilt. Why is it important? That was the so-called red area. In this, uh, at the center is the uh, perimeter, and in that case, we have a widening of this perimetral area. So, of course, you have to have uh, escape routes in case of uh, earthquake. In that case, I can uh, provide it. And this is quite rare 
because many of these uh, perimeters, just because of the fear that the urban plan would slow down a reconstruction, they have been ever more limited. So that is the perimeter during the emergency phase, the red zone, then at the center, this is the perimeter, and uh, then you've got the other external uh, private actions, reconstruction. Of course, uh, vulnerability can be reduced for one case, but what about the others? If the others do not uh, implement a collective approach, resilience that can be obtained in an area cannot be obtained in another area. And that is quite emblematic when we have to work within uh, public, uh, private buildings outside the perimeter, and so the external risk is not a secondary one. If you think of reconstruction, and if you think of having a building that is not damaged, but that is uh, surrounded by vulnerable uh, buildings, uh, the safe building can, of course, be stultified, can be injured. So the point is to uh, make accessibility to historic center possible. And that is why there has been this sequencing of uh, building yards. We are trying and uh, opening up historic centers to make them autonomous and independent. That is not an easy thing. That's another case study of another historic center we are working on. So this osmosis between the home and the city, uh, the city is a big house. So uh, taking into account the relationship between spaces so there is a continuum between individual private homes, buildings, and the urban fabric as a whole. And of course, you've got also uh, works of art and monuments. What about the city centers that are more resilient to increase resilience? Can they give up these values? Of course, historic values are important. They cannot be forgotten. But who will live in that historic center? Who recognizes the value of one's home? And therefore, we are faced with an issue that has emerged during this project. We have to take into account historic values and safety characterizing the historic center and the buildings uh, within the historic center when people want to go back and live, but in full safety. I don't know whether you remember, after the earthquake, there was a, a harsh criticism against the Umbria authority in charge of cultural heritage. All the cultural assets were collapsed. Everything to be preserved collapsed and was totally damaged. So what is the choice to be done? Does it make sense to preserve historic values when the uh, risk is there to lose everything? What is the balance between conservation and uh, safety, we have to be proactive. It is also a question of uh, uh, public costs. Uh, private insur insurances was a, a weakness. If I insist on a uh, uh, public historic space which is vulnerable, this is a school building. Uh, it, we were lucky because uh, it happened on a Sunday. So the school was empty, so nobody died. So this picture shows that we shouldn't just focus on public sector, but also the relationship between uh, the private buildings and the public space. 
the various facades facing to one another, and this is central for our research and technical expertise. So we have uh, moved, shifted our attention from the bricks and stones to individuals, to subjects. So I want people living in the historic center to understand that uh, an action will increase the value. It took three years before uh, people who had their uh, home damage within the city center forgot about their fear. Uh, when people are asked, are you afraid of going back home? Many people say, yes, I'm afraid it, it would be too dangerous. But now this memory is a trying, is a starting to fade away. So there is uh, uh, less fear. So within this municipality, we could implement a quicker reconstruction process. We could program actions, but we couldn't find a balance between technical innovation and conservation with the authority in charge of a cultural heritage because they want to do conservation no matter what. And to conclude, <laughs> Uh, talking about uh, uh, historic centers uh, requires us to talk about container and uh, the content of such container. All the strategic public services were uh, brought outside the city and they were moved outside the city over the past seven years. And of course, the strategic functions won't go back to the city center, which is absolutely reasonable. And what about the buildings that remain empty? This is another question. So the point is to reconstruct, but you are reconstructing, you are rebuilding what these buildings are for. They are rebuilt because they are they have a historic value. An innovative element could be introduced with the implementation of seismic seismic microzoning. In these examples, we can see the difference between the various uh, uh, levels of uh, uh, soil structure ratio that vary from one area to another when there is a stiffness between the various uh, types of soil. Uh, were we aware of it? Maybe yes, maybe not. Can it be a criterion to diversify the purpose of uh, buildings, the interaction between the soil and infrastructure? Who knows? That might be a parameter to be taken into account. A second point of assessment the limit conditions for the emergency uh, to uh, be possible to uh, make it possible to take action during the emergency situation in this case the tool might be uh, something that doesn't really give you an idea about uh, specific actions but guidelines strategic guidelines as for urban quality this is a support tool that is now being used. Umbria uh, had worked on the minimal urban structure based on a regional law. We don't have uh, uh, this law, this, re this regional law might be true for Emilia Romagna, so there are many critical issues. So there is a, a cultural issue that has to be solved. These pictures that are often used in our courses with our students that really shows what we mean uh, when talking about individual actions and collective actions. So we have the same space which is occupied, but the relationship between the parts has got lost. So we are now reflecting 
on reducing urban vulnerability, but also, on the other hand, on what the content might be uh, within these uh, buildings that are uh, rebuilt within the historic centers, trying and understanding whether we might make these uh, spaces still usable, part of a life cycle that allows over time to keep the functions alive of historic centers. Architectural quality is a cultural element to be further redefined because sometimes we preserve things that have uh, uh, lost their value without considering the uh, wholeness of the buildings and uh, the relationship with the landscape. So preserving buildings and shapes and within the settlement means having the courage <coughs> of telling these people that it's time to go back and live within these buildings. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. So during implementation plans, we have to find a balance between conservation and innovation, uh, trying to uh, build safer public spaces. So we are now focused on conservation mechanisms and technical innovation to be applied on uh, historic buildings. So every earthquake brought about innovation like the one, the earthquake in the L'Aquila, or uh, the use of uh, new fiber technologies in Emilia Romagna after its uh, earthquake in uh, uh, Assisi, uh, the basilica uh, was uh, uh, hung by means of springs. So we are using 3D uh, technologies, but technical innovation cannot prevail on cultural uh, innovation. Let me conclude simply by saying a couple of more thoughts. Since we are researchers, uh, we at our university, we have done a research action on the field. And being researchers, we have built a mosaic of this network uh, to take action in, in case of emergency. Does it make sense uh, to introduce safety in the historic center of a, a city if you don't access to it? Of course, we have to keep the main roads and the escape routes open and available and accessible. Uh, for uh, to allow the emergency vehicles to enter the city and to allow people to leave the city in case of an emergency. Is it better to prevent rather than cure? Let me now conclude on this slide. Uh, this map shows uh, two maps that are well known. And these two maps have to be overlapped to try and understand for what purposes we are rebuilding without forgetting about the community values. These are our reflections that we are working on. And the project uh, that we have been involved in now is uh, focusing on many aspects of these issues. And it is quite innovative because it wishes to widen uh, uh, this uh, kind of reflection on other Mediterranean cities and towns. And so the supra-regional dimension is the right dimension to build and to think about building, to introduce a new approach that is not just related to special uh, orders that are issued every time. I'm not saying that a, a single text should be issued, but we should have a uniform tool so that we can refer to it and we can 
Wir haben einen Benchmark. Und so, we want to start from there. So, uh, we don't want to be jealous of uh, the knowledge that has been acquired. We want to export such an experience by means of a call for proposals. Uh, the living quality, this is another research, because of course, uh, historic city centers have to be made safe and to be made lively again. We want people to live there and our research projects should allow us to rethink public spaces for them to have a better quality and to be safe also during an emergency situation. And so we have worked on accessibility, on accessible routes to uh, make these historic centers accessible. Of course, we know that it is not so easy to access these historic centers, but we want them to be accessible and safe at the same time. Safety and accessibility need to be reconciled. And that's what we have worked on and we will work, we'll continue to work on in the future. And probably so we will uh, find other uh, partners who are interested and we are ready to cooperate with you on all these various aspects. Benissimo, ringraziamo Anni Marinelli e Luca Domenella per questa presentazione molto interessante con tantissimi spunti utili anche per quelli che sono poi gli interventi successivi eh, attraverso questi esempi di ricerca e azione abbiamo potuto um, affrontare tematiche che sono state fondamentali anche per il progetto quale diciamo, la relazione tra lo spazio pubblico e gli edifici privati e um, appunto la relazione tra lo spazio pubblico and, uh, e gli edifici the privati è stato uh, anche il cuore della, spaces has been the very della ricerca heart del, del of the research e il tema della accessibilità, della qualità e della well sicurezza sono tutti temi che sono estremamente rilevanti e abbiamo visto anche a quante diverse sale that they are so important at many different levels. Uh, 